Hi everyone and uh, welcome back to the Waterhouse Ford. Well we had an interesting weekend. We had a, a new log splitter arrive um, and uh, we've done a separate video on that. Hopefully you've seen us putting that together and giving it a, a bit of a, a maiden voyage. Um, so we spent most of this morning um, splitting logs which was uh, a lot of fun. Um, still got a lot more to do. Um, although it makes the job a lot easier and a lot quicker um, there's quite a lot of logs there. It, uh, it maybe doesn't look quite quite that much on video, but um, anyway, it, we're getting there, and uh, nevertheless, having a lot of fun as well. Um, the other thing that that uh, happened this week was we. You may recall last weekend we had we identified that we had been sent the wrong bearings for the crown gear on the Ferguson. Uh, the ones that have been sent, I believe, are for the outer bearings. In other words, the ones that sit. Uh, at the end of the shafts, the half shafts, and right up against the wheel, so essentially the wheel bearings. Um, so they were too small, they were the wrong ones. We need to get, we need to get those back to AgriLine. Um, and when I measured the, the correct, you know, the old bearing, um, which is this one here, at least when I measured the internal diameter, I measured around 66.7, um, that was my, my measuring, uh, millimeters. Um, when I looked at their website, they seemed to have a bearing which matched, but they've got it labelled as for the 35, uh, Ferguson 35. Now, uh, and they, they didn't feel that it was the right one for the, for the TED. So, uh, I contacted a different company called Old 20 Parts. Now, I've not used them before, um, but they were recommended by AgriLine, and um, AgriLine suggested that they probably would have the right part. Um, contacted them, uh, spoke to the gentleman there, it was very helpful, um, he had a look, and he was um, pretty certain that he had the right part. Um, and so he sent me two of these, which are, hopefully this will come out on camera, they, they, are, they look quite large, they look quite big, sorry about the rustling. Uh, but I'm afraid they are still not the right size. I don't know, I'm hoping that that's going to come out on camera, but you can see that they are too small. They measure 59 millimeters internal diameter. The outside diameter, I'm struggling a little bit to measure that whilst it's still, the outer race is still in the trumpet housing. Uh, so today what I'm going to do and uh, what this video is about is I'm going to knock those, uh, at least one of the outer races, out of the trumpet housing so that I can get a proper measurement of that. I'll also then be able to measure the actual depth of the, of the bearing. Uh, and essentially with those three measurements, I'm hoping I'll be able to find the right bearing this time. And uh, hopefully we'll be third time lucky. Get, uh, hopefully find them and get those ordered this coming week. And uh, next weekend, hopefully then, we'll be able to get the crown gear finished eventually. So, it's been uh, a little bit frustrating on that front, um, but again, I'm hoping that we can get that sorted. So, what I'm going to do, uh, obviously the outer race sits inside the trumpet housing, and it's quite a, obviously the trumpet housing itself is quite large, quite long, um, and so it's going to be interesting to see how to knock those out from, essentially from the back, i.e. from inside the trumpet housing. I have a, I have a long piece of round bar, um, and I'm hoping that that's going to be, it is long enough, but I hope it's going to be strong enough to, um, to allow me to knock those out. So I'm going to give that a go. Um, I'll film that and I'll probably put it on uh, fast speed when I publish the video because I'm sure it's going to be long and tedious, but let's see how we go. Um, depending on how we go, depending on how much time I've got left, I might get into a couple other smaller jobs and of course I'll video those as well. But it really does depend on how we go. We're heading towards the end of the day here now, and um, I just don't know how much time we're going to have. So we'll, uh, we'll give it a go. Hope that you uh, follow along. Hope that you enjoy. And, uh, and of course, we um, hope to see you on the next video as well.
Right, well, that worked better than I expected. I don't know about you, but um, I wasn't expecting them to come out quite that easy. Now, look, I don't know anything about bearings, really. Um, but what I find interesting is that this one, which is essentially the outer race, is marked as a 3920, and it looks like it's got a slash 3. I'm not sure what the slash 3 means, but... I'm a bit surprised because I would have thought that the two parts of the bearing should have the same part number. This one is a 3984 and it looks like it's a slash 2 engraved on there. So, look, I don't know, maybe, maybe that doesn't make sense. Maybe it's logical that the two parts should have a different part number. Perhaps if, uh, I can't imagine anybody wanting to replace just one of the halves, but I guess it's possible. Maybe it's just part of the manufacturing process that they they need to have them separate. Now, I mean, I'm, I'm, I really am glad that we're replacing these bearings because that that is not smooth. I mean, it's not terrible, but it's, it's you can definitely feel the pitting on the on the rollers. Right. So let's get this measured up. Um, the first thing we need to do is measure the internal diameter. I'm going to do it in millimeters. And once I've got it set, I'll um, bring it so you can see. So there you see 6.673 millimeters on the internal diameter. Okay. On the out, uh, outer diameter, let me get this better into the into the frame better. So look, I'm measuring, can you see it there? 112.7. Just make sure we have definitely got, yeah. Hundred and twelve point seven two on the external, maybe seven three on the external diameter or the outer diameter. And then if we put the bearing back together and measure the thickness. We've got thirty pretty much 30.05. Now here's the interesting thing. Those measurements, I believe, are the exact same measurements as the bearing that Agriline have for the what they claim to be for the, 30, the Ferguson 35, um, which I can't remember exactly which series of the 35, but certainly for the 35. Um, I mean, obviously, I'll, I'll, I'll be contacting them and all 20 parts this week to try and work out what what has gone on there but um, there you go a lesson I guess certainly a lesson for me I'm sure you all have learnt this lesson yourselves but just don't rely on the description um, on websites I think you know especially with bearings and, and this kind of bearing which is not replaced that frequently I don't believe probably better if you uh, remove it measure it and make sure that you give them the measurements. Don't just rely on them knowing which part you actually need. Because I don't know what's going on here, but certainly this is the second bearing that we've been sent, which is just not the right one. So anyway, look, that's it. That's all we can do on this for today. Um, we're going to move on to the next item and see what we can fiddle with now, whilst um, essentially for the rest of the day. So um, I'll sort that out, and then we'll come back. Okay, I thought what we'd do is uh, remove this hydraulic quadrant. It's uh, hopefully not a too big a deal job and um, one that we can get done relatively easy. I'm looking at that nut on there. It's a castellated nut. Um, and again, it has a little split pin in there. The split pin looks horribly corroded. I think we're going to struggle with that, but uh, hopefully once that's off, we can get uh, get the rest of it off. So, yeah, let's see how we go. Oscar's here, and Oscar's going to help me. Say hello. 
Hello. If you use a screwdriver to try and bend that, those the legs of the split pin straight. You can use pliers as well. way to do it from here is to just grab them both and pull. And one's dropped off. <laughs> okay. Well, definitely been needing a new one. Yeah. So what we'll try to do is get this get this side off. So and try. Then knock it out with a very small punch. It's starting to come out now. Huh? It's coming. There we go. It's one half out. A half out. So it's cracked in the middle. No, it isn't too hard, remember. Oh, yeah. Okay, there's the two holes out. Cool. <laughs> now hopefully we can get a socket on there. And turn it out. Right now the handle will have to come up. Is it coming? Yeah, I think so. Why is there a spring on that? To provide tension. There we go, now that is a very damaged, cast, well, very corroded castellated nut. We'll have to see if we can either try and recover that, otherwise we'll have to try and replace it. Very strange looking spring, as you can see. This spring provides tension on this plate, and behind that plate is a friction disc, right? And that's what allows this lever to move freely, back, well, not freely, but backwards and forwards, up and down, with a certain amount of tension on it, so that where it stays wherever you put it. Mm -hmm. Right. So when you when it when it's set up properly, if you move the lever to there, it should stay there. Because if you want your hydraulic arms to be in a particular place, mm -hmm. you need to stay. They or rather that lever needs to stay there. Mm -hmm. Right. So now to get that off, we're going to remove this nut and bolt here. And if that doesn't, if that proves to be too difficult, then we'll remove these, and this whole piece should then come off. Yeah. Okay.
Can't it just slide out? Yeah, try. It isn't coming out. It is. Isn't any more. Okay. There's a friction disc. Yeah, there's your friction disc there. There's also a key in there. See those bits on there? See that's locked. I mean, this side's pretty good, but that one isn't. That's fine. Yeah. Now, we need to get this key out. Uh, that's the old friction disc, which, interestingly, this one looks like it's made of rubber. And I'm pretty sure it should be cork, and the one we have is cork. But um, I'm not sure if rubber is one that they, that is available generally, or somebody's actually made that. But anyway, that's off. I'm not sure about this key. I need to research that and find out how to take that off. I think you're right, Oscar. I think we probably will remove this whole fitting so that we can get this whole thing off because all of us need to be nicely cleaned up and it'll obviously be easier to clean when it's off the tractor. So, yeah, let's uh, get the right tools for that and we'll take that off as well. A little bit of perseverance and that key has now come out. I'm amazed at how tight that was. But anyway, so that's also that's what they call a wood roof key. Hmm. It's like a half moon shape. And it sits inside the shaft. There's a corresponding hole in the shaft. Yeah. And that sits in there, and obviously then it provides a key for the lever to ride on. It ties the lever to the shaft. So now we can take this off? Yeah. No, we do need to take these bolts out first. Yeah. Okay. What is that? <laughs> okay. Now that's very concerning because that looks very dirty.
Well, that's the state of the inside of this gearbox and transmission case and hydraulics, then I'm very concerned. Hopefully the camera's focusing on that. Well, there you go. Uh, just a little job this afternoon um, to remove that hydraulic quadrant. Bit of a shock, really, to, um, to see the state of that shaft on the inside. Um, quite disappointed about that, really. Um, I mean, I was half thinking we need to open that up anyway and have a look. That's confirmed for me now that we probably need to. In fact, we have to. Um, I really wasn't expecting to see that level of dirt um, come out. Now, maybe that's just at the top half. Maybe it's just on, on, the, um, on that actual shaft itself. I don't know. Um, but then again, when I think back to the, what the state of the oil was when we, when we drained both the back end, the diff, and the transmission, um, I suppose it's not really surprising. Anyway, so yeah, Oscar, thank you very much for your help. You got anything to say to people? No. No? Did you have fun? Yeah. Excellent. Alright everyone, hope you have a good week and uh, we'll see you again next week. Cheers for now.